Hi, and welcome to Executive Mosaic's GovCon Conversation Series. I'm Charles lyons Senior Content Specialist at Executive Mosaic, and we are the Capital Region's leading GovCon media and networking organization. Today, I'm lucky to be joined by Rob Linger. Rob is VP at Lidos and leads the company's information advantage practice. Today, we're here to talk about how information advantage can enable faster and more informed decision making. At Lidos, Rob assists transforming how federal agencies harness data and insights as part of their digital modernization journey. Rob, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, I wanted to get started today by just talking a little about your unique background, uh, kind of leading up to you leading AI at Lidos. So you served in the Marine Corps, you've held tech leadership positions, and even held a public service position. Uh, talk to me a little about how all of that has shaped your perspective on applying AI to critical national security missions. Sure thing, and uh, and thanks for the question. So, um, you know, along the way, working in in a number of different realms in the technology world, right, from executive leadership to functional uh, executing on some of these things, you start to learn some of the roadblocks uh, that, are, that are there that you need to work through or think through up front. Uh, you learn a lot from the people that you work with and, and the different organizations on how to execute sort of the change management aspect of implementing these types of changes in a number of different spaces. What you learn is that a lot of challenges are the same across a number of the sectors but primarily the the thing that really drives me at least from my background and and my experience in a lot of these different areas is my bias for action i'm i'm very interested in in getting to outcomes as quickly as possible and helping our customers lower that time to value for the solutions that we bring to play definitely well thanks that's yeah that makes a lot of sense and uh i think Anyone who's worked in multiple industries can see that sort of those common threads that just kind of thread through and kind of just reflect back on what are human challenges, you know, and organizational challenges. So agencies are overwhelmed by the velocity and volume of data these days. How is Lidos enabling real time decision making at scale? The ultimate goal is is to bring really scalable solutions to our customers and that could take a number of different forms. And, and sometimes I get a little flack for saying it because I'm the AI guy, right? But not every solution needs to be AI. You have other things that, that are still very valuable in the customer space that can get the job done. Uh, you can do things like RPA. You can uh, you know, maybe look at you know, policies and processes that are in place that, that may be hampering forward progress. But at the end of the day, a lot of times, once you work through all of those things and, and you start to streamline, you, you start to understand what it, what it would take to have that scalable solution. And a number of times, artificial intelligence, machine learning, advanced analytics, those sort of things really do become important. So the, the biggest part is, is understanding what your data is which parts of your data are actually valuable to the outcomes that, that you're trying to achieve and how you change and transform that data from just data into actionable insights that can help drive your business or your mission forward. Definitely. So you call yourself, you know, the AI guy. Is that has that been a longstanding interest of yours, even, you know, predating the 2022 boom or, or where did that kind of start happening for you? So along my path to, to, to getting to where I am with Lidos, I've, I've worked in a number of different roles that required me, due to various different reasons along the way, to, to teach myself and, and gain interest in things like cybersecurity, to teach myself things like data analytics and machine learning, to help improve processes in, in the areas where I worked. So Along the way, uh, I sort of started to become known as, as the guy that knows AI, uh, the guy that knows software, because for me, like I said, really 
lowering that time to value and having that bias for action, a part of uh, my journey in learning about artificial intelligence and machine learning has always been how do I get this into production? So you bring in the software side. I've always been extremely interested in the, you know, what we call operationalization of artificial intelligence and machine learning, where you build everything on a, a good academic foundation. Your, your hypothesis is good. You work your data. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to deploy the capability and you need to be able to secure the capability. So bringing those three things together have always been sort of a primary driver of mine. And I talk about it to anybody who will listen and put up with me for more than five minutes to talk about it. So I kind of, uh, amongst people that know me, become known as, as, as the AI guy. Gotcha. So, so these are tools in which to achieve um, information superiority what are the biggest barriers to achieving that information superiority right now? Oh, there, there's some big barriers out there. And, and one of the big ones is going to be your data silos. We have a, we've been collecting data for a long time. Uh, you know, all of our customers, every, every business, every agency has been collecting data for a very long time. And, Throughout time, sometimes the mission changes, uh, sometimes the data that you want to collect changes, but it, it doesn't decrease the need to have that data. But a lot of times different groups or different teams may be collecting this data. There may be organizational challenges for sharing that data across uh, you know, different groups. You see this a lot sort of uh, interagency within the US government and they're, they're making great strides right now on being able to share data across those agencies in order to have a positive impact on our nation. But the data silos are still very real and it's something that, that we have to work through. Uh, misinformation is another big one and that can come in the form of gathering information off of the internet that, that may have been nefariously placed there or just incorrectly placed there. It could also be a, a misinterpretation of, of the data that you already have. But the, the misinformation piece uh, is, is certainly a concern. Um, and I'll also add that it's a growing concern due to LLMs and the way that LLMs operate. Uh, large language models, they're very good at confidently lying to you. And it's, it's not so much they're lying to you. But the way that LLMs work is that they use statistics to estimate what the next token or the next part of a word will be. So if uh, the users of LLMs are not careful about vetting the information that they are generating and then putting out into public, that can cause a, a downstream effect of, of misinformation getting into places that you don't want it. Adversarial AI is another big one. And really the, the only way to overcome all of these challenges is to truly be stewards of our data understand what our data is and what it's supposed to be, and understand that the mission has to have a particular outcome. And you need to understand how to turn your data into that knowledge to achieve your outcome. Definitely, yeah, and that, that resonates a lot, you talking about LLMs and they, you know, at their worst they act like one of one of the best well rehearsed liars you know that you've ever met where they know all of the sort of right words to say in a general sentence about a subject but you know maybe they're not in the right order or just they don't particularly actually apply to that question um but you know you talk about da data stewardship what uh obviously being a steward of data is uh, a big role in that is protecting it through cybersecurity measures how does cyber resilience contribute to maintaining an information advantage? So that's a great question. And cybersecurity is a, a vital piece of this puzzle. So we have to start by making sure that our data is secure. From, from the beginning, we have to secure our data and we have to maintain ownership of our data. Uh, you have to assume going in that any system that's connected is, is compromised. 
So from there, you have to ensure that you have the tooling in place and monitoring in place and the capabilities to be able to detect uh, these types of intrusions and recover from them. Uh, you need to ensure that uh, through, through your cybersecurity efforts, once you have a, a sort of a value chain of going from data to decision-making capability, be it analytics or, or whatever it may be, you need to be able to ensure that once that capability is in place, that the integrity of your data from the beginning to the end uh, is, is solid. And you need to make sure that that uh, decision-making environment really remains uninterrupted. And the only way to do that is through, you know, foundationally solid cybersecurity practices. Gotcha. And you're, and that's a, a major part of, of what you do in your role and what your team does. So my team actually works with uh, another team. We, we have a, a defensive cyber operations practice within Lidos that is a partner practice of the information advantage practice. So we work very closely together, not only in ensuring that the things that information advantage brings to bear for our customers includes uh, cybersecurity capabilities at its core, but then on the flip side as well, a lot of cybersecurity capabilities these days include artificial intelligence, and they are all obviously dependent on data, data flows, and data pipelines. So to try to separate the two is very difficult, and my, my counterpart and I work very closely to ensure that, like I said, the, the solutions that we bring forward to our customers include both pieces of that puzzle. Gotcha. That makes sense. Well, finally here, Rob, how can organizations use automation to accelerate decision cycles? But let's step back just for a second and, and, and remember the foundation is understanding your data and ensuring that your, your data is secure and that your data is correct. So if you start from that premise, and then you look at the outcomes you're trying to achieve, generally with, with the mission knowledge and the understanding of, of the problem space, you can quickly boil down what the inputs for any given decision need to be. And you can work sort of from right to left and say, this is the type of outcome that, I, that is required for sort of a, um, you know, an information advantage or, or rapid decision making. And you can be very targeted and you can be very intentional about how you move the data across that decision pipeline to end up with the outcomes that are required. So uh, again, I'm, I'm very uh, biased towards action. So I, I like to see what the outcome needs to be. I like to understand what the pain points are, what the, the existing environment looks like. And then I like to work backwards and say, how do we make these decisions based on the information that we have? Uh, if we can make the decision better by adding additional information, then let's bring that in. And we work that way to build data products. And these, these data products are, are sort of living and breathing capabilities that really accelerate the ability to, to make those decisions on the fly. Well, not so much on the fly, but in an informed way based on, on your data. Definitely. Well, thank you, Rob. This has been really informative and I appreciate your time today. Thank you.